hello guys and then welcome to another video okay so in this video we'll be talking about catch-off laws okay um we've gone through all the basics of apply electricity okay so we are now diving into the much more a bit serious and then complicated portions okay so we'll be talking about catch-off laws okay we know that we have catch-off current law and then what's voltage law okay after that we'll be talking about terminating northern superposition and the rest okay so in case you are new to this channel kindly subscribe okay subscribe and then hit on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any uploaded videos tutorial solve the tu tutorial questions and then other useful tricks okay so without much i do let's just dive right into this video okay so for Kirchhoff's law, we have the current law, okay, and then the voltage law, okay. We have the Kirchhoff's current law and then the voltage law. So we'll be we'll be trying to you know explain the current law, okay, and then the voltage law, okay. So this video will be basically the introduction to Kirchhoff's principles or Kirchhoff's laws or Kirchhoff's rules, okay, and then the next video will be solve the examples okay so that to broaden your scope on the you know the topic okay so when we talk about Kirchhoff's law as already stated we have the Kirchhoff's current law okay and then we have the Kirchhoff's voltage law so let's look at the Kirchhoff's current law that's KCL okay now the Kirchhoff current law states that the sum of currents entering the node okay must be equal to the sum of currents leaving the node okay so the sum of currents entering a node must be equal to the sum of currents leaving the node so in case you don't know a node i might brief you on this right away but you can go back to our playlist on apply electricity and then have a glance or just skim through the video and then you get to understand what nodes and loops are okay now let's get right into this so when we talk about the node this is a node okay this is a node okay that's where some of is the point where current leaves or enters a circuit okay that's a node right now the current law states that the sum of currents entering a node must be equal to the sum of currents what leaving the node that means that current i is entering this node right current i1 is also entering current i2 is leaving okay i3 is also leaving i4 is leaving and then i5 is what entering so this is what catch of current law means so you have this i okay this i i okay plus this i1 okay is entering this node okay so you have what i1 okay plus okay we have what i5 entering the node okay so you have what i5 right now this has to be equal to the sum of current what leaving the node so you have what i2 is leaving this node right that's the direction okay the direction the arrow sign is moving away from the node okay i2 right just like the i i1 and then i5 having their arrow sign coming towards the node okay but for i2 is moving the arrow sign is moving away from the node okay so you have what i2 okay plus what i3 is also leaving the arrow sign is leaving the node okay so you have what i what 3 okay plus what I4 is also leaving the node, okay? So you have what I4. So this is what we mean by catch of what current law, okay? The sum of currents entering the node must be equal to the sum of currents leaving the node, okay? This might seem a bit vague, so let's take an example, okay, so that it, you get to understand the exact principle of catch of current law okay so now let's look at this example so we have what um currents entering leaving a certain node okay this node right so let's see 
using Kirchhoff's current law, you are we will be able to identify the currents leaving and then the currents entering and then we get to find what uh, I. So most definitely we will find I. So this I has the arrow sign entering this node, okay? So you have what? I, right? Okay? And let's look for other currents entering the node. So you have what? Two amps, okay? Two amps entering this node okay all the values over here are in amps okay so two is entering this node okay so you have what plus two okay and then we have what five is also entering okay so you have what plus five okay and this has to be what equal to the ones leaving the node so you have ten and three leaving the node okay so you have what ten Okay, plus what three? Okay, so from here we have what I okay plus what seven? Okay, this has to what equal to what thirty? Okay, now so from here we have a what I to be equal to what when you do the simple calculation. You end up with what six amps, okay? Yes, so this is what we mean by catch off current law, okay? The sum of current leaving the node has to be equal to the sum of current entering the node. Now, let's look at the second law of catch off, okay? Or the second catch off law, which is the what catch off voltage law, okay? Now, let's look. Look at the catch of voltage law. Now, when we talk about catch of voltage law, we simply um, try to sum up um, the voltages of a complete circuit. Okay, so catch of voltage law simply implies that the algebraic sum of voltages in a loop or a closed path equals zero. Okay, so let me just brief you on what a loop is. Okay, so from this entire circuit, we could notice that there are certain voltages. Um, resistors okay and then what certain numbers okay alphabets written all over the circuit okay now when, when you start from okay we know that current starts our current um, leaves a, vo a voltage source from the positive side and then enters through the negative side okay so there is a positive the long one is a positive and the shorter one is what the negative so this current will move from here and then try to move in this direction okay and come back to this point okay now you can see that this current is what i1 is moving in this direction okay so when taking the loop you take the loop in that direction okay you take the loop alongside the direction of the current flow okay so the current is moving from a right towards b back toward g and then back towards h and then back towards a so this is how we take our loop so our loop or the closed part will be what a b g h a okay so when you when you take a loop like a b g h a it means that the loop is closed or the the loop is what or has a closed part okay but when you take um, a loop like A, B, G, H, it means that your loop is open because you didn't add the words A. So what I'm trying to say is that when you take a loop like loop, what? Let's say you have loop what? Loop A, B, G, H A okay this is the right way or the correct way of taking a loop okay it means that the current will start from this point move towards A to B back to G and then towards H and then back to A again it means that we've taken or we've chosen the right loop okay so the loop has to be closed okay okay the path has to be closed 
so when you move from a to b then to g to h and then you don't come back to a it means that the loop is what open okay now this is how you take their their what the catch of voltage okay law okay so once you take the what the loop which is a b g h a okay a b g h a you notice that i said that this is what our own slow okay yes this is our own slow okay yes this is our own slow that voltage has to be called what the current times the resistor or resistance okay now you could notice that all these portions are, are resistances okay let's say this r1 okay this is what r2 okay this r tv okay this is what r4 okay and this is what r5 right now since we know that v is equal to ir this is how you take your kvl so you notice that a b g h a have respective what voltages resistors currents and then resistors and their respective currents so this is how you take the kvl for loop a b g h a okay this is how it works so you have what a v1 okay v1 okay has to be what equal to what the algebraic sum of the voltages okay you know that voltage is equal to the current and then what the resistance okay the, the product of the current and resistance so from this loop you could notice that you have i1 r1 when you multiply this you get out your voltage and you have i3 i r3 when you multiply this you get out v what v3 okay so the same thing applies the algebraic sum of voltages in a loop has to be equal to zero okay so this is what we mean so we have what this okay so we are taking this loop the entire loop okay so we have i1 r1 okay okay and then plus what i3 okay i3 r3 okay yes this is our first loop okay now let's take the the other loop okay let's jump to this point okay let's just um jump over this one okay the middle portion then come to the end okay let's look at v2 okay so as i said earlier you'll be taking the loop in the direction of the current flow okay so this is how the current flows okay from the positive to this point okay then comes down to this point now let's see how we take the loops okay so you have what another loop okay another loop okay have what what's d c f e d okay d c f e d okay so we have a loop to what let me write it in the same color so that okay so we have what d okay okay let me just erase this okay right so you have what d what c okay f what e what d okay yes that's our loop okay our loop is what d c f e d okay it means that the loop is closed now let's see how you find out what the algebraic sum of the voltage so you have what v2 okay has to be equal to what now from here you could see that i4 and r4 or the current i4 is moving alongside the voltage source okay the voltage from this point you could notice that the current will be what positive because it's moving in the same direction from the positive side of the voltage so we have what i4 okay and then what multiply by what r4 okay now from here you could notice that 
I5 is moving in the opposite direction. Unlike I3 over here, you can notice that the I1 was moving this direction and then the direction with which the I1 was moving was the same as when compared to the I3, you can see. So we have I1 moving in this direction, I2 will follow the same pattern, okay? But for I4, you can notice that it's moving in this direction, but I5 is moving in the opposite direction. So the I5 will definitely be what's negative, okay? So it's moving contrary to the direction of the I4. So we have what? Negative what? I5, okay? Then what? R5. Okay, so these are equation two. Now let's look at the third loop. That's the middle loop. Okay, so we have what? Okay, let me make a little room for this. Okay, now so we have what? The middle portion. Okay, so the, for the middle portion, let's take the loop from B, C, F, G, B. Okay, so we have what? Loop. Okay, we have loop, loop what? Okay, so we have what loop B C F G B. Okay, so we have loop B C F what? G what? B. Okay, yes. That's right. So from here we could just write the what the K V O out. So notice that for this loop B C F G B we don't have any voltage source. Okay, all we have are the current and the resistor. Okay, so the voltage will be what zero. Yes, you are right. Even only if you said zero, in case you said something different, it means that you are wrong. But in case you said zero, it means that you are right, okay? So, since there is no voltage source, we will just represent that by what? Zero, okay? So, zero must be equal to what? Let's look at our current direction, okay? So, I2, R2, okay? So, we have what? I2, R2, okay? And then we have what? yes this will be negative again because it's moving in the opposite direction okay yes it's the b is moving in the opposite direction okay the i5 is moving in the opposite direction so we have what it should have been like this okay it should have been moving in this direction then move downwards okay the current should have moved downwards but it's moving upwards right so we have what negative what i5 okay r5 okay yes that's right now let's look at the um the i3 okay so now from now from here you could notice that i2 moved in this direction it means that it was what positive okay it means that it was positive now when it, we got to this point the i5 moved in the opposite direction okay meaning that that will also be what's negative now when we get back to this point we could notice that the i3 okay is also moving in the opposite direction okay i3 is moving in the opposite direction so that will also be what negative okay it should have moved alongside the words i2 okay so we have the i2 moving in this direction okay in this direction the i5 moving contrary to the words i2 now and then the i3 is also moving in the opposite direction okay it means that that will also be what negative okay that is if you are taking the loop in the direction i'm taking my loop okay but in case you were to take the loop in this direction c b g f c you would have gotten a different answer okay 
I'll do that right away so that you get to know the difference, okay? So let's finish with taking the loop B, C, F, G, B, okay? So we have what? I3, I, R3 being what? Negative, okay? So we have what? Minus what? I3, okay? R3, okay? Now, this is our third equation. Now let's take the loop in a different direction, okay? Let's say you took the loop this way, okay? Maybe you took for the same example, so you took from here, okay? From here, from this loop. Maybe we we chose to go with loop B, G, F, C, B, okay? So this is how it's going to be. Let's say we took loop, so from here, okay? Let's say we took loop. Let's say we took. Let's say we took loop B. Okay. Loop B, G, F, C, B. Okay. Loop B, G, F, C, B. Okay. That will give us a different what circuit arrangement okay so that will give us what same thing the voltage source is what zero okay now since we are taking the loop in this direction b g f c b okay the i3 will be positive okay so it's moving in the same direction right so we have i3 r3 okay now so when the current gets to this point, it will move in this direction, okay? Once it moves in this in this direction, it will also move contra no in the same direction with I5, okay? So I5 will also be what positive. So we have what plus we have what plus what I5, okay? I5 are what? Five, okay and then from here you can notice that once the current gets to this point it will split again but it will go in this direction so that it will flow in the same direction okay but when the current gets to this point and then starts flowing backwards to B we could notice that the current direction is in exact opposite to what I2 so I2 what I2 will be negative okay so we have what i2 b what negative okay I have negative what i2 okay r2 okay okay yes so this brings us to the end of the um introduction to Kirchhoff's you know Kirchhoff's KVO and then Kirchhoff's KCL. I hope you enjoyed this video. Kindly subscribe, hit on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any uploaded videos. Okay, so in the next video, we'll be talking about um, solved examples on Kirchhoff's laws. Okay, I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.